Hi everyone, I'm going to do a series of short videos to try and get you used to using CSS. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to do a video a day all this week so that you can try doing some things with CSS so you can kind of get the hang of it. And the reason we're doing this, as I mentioned, we're going to do WordPress for your website. And WordPress handles most of the code load for you. Um, so you're probably wondering, Groves, why do we have to learn coding at all? because there are some times you want to change things about your theme that the options are not available. And if you know a little bit of CSS, you can actually change those things yourself and you don't have to be at the mercy of the coder. So that's why we're learning this so that you can tweak your WordPress site and bend it to your will. Just think of it as having some power. So we're going to start off looking at the HTML, some basics that we've already learned, right? You, you should recognize our um, heading element. You should recognize the paragraph element. You might not have seen this one, the horizontal rule, which actually draws a line on the page. You can also add a line break if you want to add some spaces. And then we did the lists, right, with the list items. So, so we had a little bit we played around with some of these, and then we've also used the anchor element, and we've also used the image element. Now, something we haven't talked a lot about is the difference between block elements and inline elements. And this is going to be really important as we start getting into CSS. So what's the big difference? Block level elements basically have a hard return after them. So if we look at your code on the page when you did your resume and you did the h1 when you close that h1 you notice there was a return after your name and the next paragraph started on a new line that's how block level elements work an inline element will keep everything on the same line what's an inline element well image is actually an inline element because it doesn't put a return after the picture is there. Um, we also have elements like we can add bold facing using the strong element, and we can also use the emphasis element or the EM element, and both of those are inline elements. There's no return that's put after them, but they affect how our page, how our page is interpreted. Remember, HTML is used for semantics, and presentation is done through our CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's basically a way for us to add a look to our content. There are basically three kinds of styles, okay? So we have External Style Sheets, which is a completely separate file that is located in the same folder, that you attach to your page and you attach it using a link element um, in the head section of your page. Remember I said there's the head section and the body section. The head section tells you about the page. The body section is what is actually on the page. So anytime we want to attach an external style sheet, we're going to add a file and put that in the head section. You can also embed a style sheet in the head section using actually an HTML element called style, which you would think. And then you can put all of the styles in there. The problem with this is it only affects that single web page. An external style sheet can be applied to every page on your website, and that's the big advantage of them because then you can change a style and say, I want all H1s on the website to be red. Okay, I don't know why you'd wanna do that because it would look terrible, but you can do that, right? So you can say H1, I want color red, and it will do that, and you don't have to change it on every single page of your website because the style sheet will do that for you. And lastly, you do the inline styles if you wanna do something on the file for one line of your text. So we're going to walk through how this actually works, okay? And we're going to do this on our sample website on CodePen. And I want you to try this as I'm doing this um, on my CodePen. Okay, so here I am at my CodePen. Now, what's a little weird about CodePen is that they don't actually attach the external style sheet. They have it in a different pane of the window. So think of this as an external style sheet 
that's being applied to your page. Now we can also handwrite it in an embedded style sheet. Okay, and I'm going to do this so you can see what I mean by an embedded style sheet. So what I've done is I've added a section with an open and closing style tag. Okay, and then what I can do is I can change any HTML element on the page by specifying things about it. So for this first video, all we're going to change is we're going to play around with colors and we're going to play around with fonts. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and change the color of this H1, right? So if I look at my page right now, the default color for text is black, but I can change this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that H1 and I'm going to say, Hey, the H1, I need to open brackets anytime I'm using CSS. And I say, I want to make this color blue. Okay. Now remember the discussion when we talked about images, I could actually use a hexadecimal color. Okay. And that will give me, I don't even know what color that is. So I'm just guessing. Oh, it's kind of red. There's my red joke. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to, for, for now, you can also write certain colors. Now, you, you can't write all, every single color there is, but there's actually quite a few colors that you can tap into these days by just writing the name of them and the HTML will interpret it. So now I've got that and now I've got my HTML and notice it only affects that H1 element. Now, what if I want to change everything in a certain section? So what if I want all of the text to look different within this education section, right? Well, I can do that too. So what I can do is I can say everything in the, that's another thing that you've probably run into in the reading, then I can change that. And I, I specify a class with a period. So what I'm going to do here, I've got the ID, education, I've used the hashtag. So if I did this right, all of the text in my education section should be blue. And that's why it's so important when I talked about in the last video, make sure you section your pages appropriately because then everything within the section changes and inherits the style in the larger section, right? So all of the H2s in this ID section or education section, anything within that is going to have that blue. And that goes for anything that we specify. So if I want to specify the font, that's going to change too. Now look at this. Remember when I designed this, I had a whole thing for this section, right? So I have a whole section here that I call content. So if I change content, is that going to change the whole thing? Oops, roll down. And that's all blue within that section because I specified that's all wrapped in this box. Okay. And notice I'm using the term box. That's really important for you to understand because everything in CSS is built around the box model. Okay. So now what I want you to do is you can change the color of anything as long as you specify it. Now I want to show you something else that is important to understand is what takes precedent. So the external style sheet is at the highest level. So anything as you get closer to the content is going to override anything else. So the external style sheet will be overridden by an embedded style sheet. And an embedded style sheet will be overwritten by the inline style. So I can actually put an inline style as an attribute to any element on the page. And remember, we talked about attributes, right? Source is an attribute. Width is an attribute. Alt is an attribute. So there's an attribute we can add called style. So I can add color red 
and the text turns red. And you're like, wait, Groves, I just wanted it to be blue, right? And so I have an H1 that's blue. And then I've said in my inline style, I want it to be red. So what the browser does is it evaluates and says, which one is closer to the content? And in this case, the inline style is closer to the content. It's going to override any other command that you have up here. Okay, so that's important to know because that may come in handy as you're trying to change something on your website or on your WordPress site. So why would you want to do this, right? Why would you have conflicting styles? Because more likely your the other example that I was doing earlier is going to come up. Oh, I think my recorder stopped, so I don't. <laughs> so I may have stopped talking in the middle of a sentence because weirdly my screencasting software sort of cuts off whenever I type the letter A. <laughs> I need to change that in my software. Anyway, so let me start that over. So I have this section header and it was and then I had the inline style that I said was red. So that's going to override the style for the whole box. That's probably a more, a better use case that you're going to run into when you might want to use an inline style. Now, good CSS design says you really shouldn't use the inline styles too much. Really, the best designers, you should have most of your changes in the external style sheet for the entire website for consistency's sake. If you're adding a bunch of stuff to embedded stuff with embedded styles or inline styles, you're you're not thinking through your design completely enough. Um, that said, this can come in handy sometimes, especially when you're trying to fix up your uh, your your WordPress site. Okay. All right, so we've looked at colors. You can do colors by writing them out, or you can use the hexadecimal code. You can actually use RGB as well. Um, and if you look in the book, it gives you all kinds of interesting examples for, for playing around with color. We're also going to play around with fonts. Now we're going to add a couple of font characteristics, OK? So I'm going to use font family, which basically says, what font should I use for a section of a page? Now, the way that font family works is I can write. So typically you'll see a series of fonts. And the reason why you do that is because not every computer is the same. And so what ends up happening is it will try to find the fonts to see if they're located on the computer. And if it's not, it will go to the second font. If that font's not available, it will go to the third font. So I'm going to specify. So I have Georgia times New Roman. And then what I might do is put serif. OK, so that what that does is it says, I'll look for Georgia. If Georgia's not available, I'll do times New Roman. If times New Roman's not available, I'll do serif. OK. So I've got the color blue. Notice how the font's a little bit different and notice how it's different from the other sections because I only specified it for the header. And then I can change the font size. So I can actually specify a point size. So it becomes huge. I can specify a percentage. And then I can also do pixels. So you have a bunch of different uh, tools at your disposal. You can also specify small, large. I can specify extra large, and then it's even bigger. So play around with this. So what I want you to do for this first exercise is putting some styles in and changing them and trying to change some sections, fonts and font colors and make them look the way that you want. And then tomorrow I'm going to introduce the box model. OK, and we're going to start exploring this. But what I want you to do with this is play around with this. And what I find is helpful is get to ridiculous sizes 
if you want to see what it does. So I'm going to say like 500 pixels, right? And it's like ridiculously huge, so huge it doesn't even fit on the page. So why don't I do 100 pixels so it's not so ridiculous? And then you see how big it is. Okay, 100 pixels. And then now I'm going to do, let's do 10 pixels. So you get an idea of sizes and you get a set, an idea of what some of the styles are doing. I'm going to show you one last thing before I end the video. So I have the embedded style sheet. So let's go to the external style sheet, which is over here. You do the same thing. You just put the style in there and it's going to do the same thing and it's going to react. So you can write all your styles in here, but I wanted to demonstrate the difference between an external style sheet, the embedded style sheet and the inline style. Okay. So change the colors of a few things. Try changing the fonts and the font sizes. Give it a go and see how you do with that. And then tomorrow I'm going to introduce the box model. So good luck.